Welcome to Shore Talk. Shore Talk is designed to keep you better informed of what's going on here on Virginia's beautiful Eastern Shore. Now, here's Shore Talk. Our guest today is with the Kiptopeak State Park down in beautiful Townsend, Virginia. We are joined on the line today by Mr. Bill Dias. And he's going to be discussing with us a few things today about the park. And we're also going to talk a little bit about the upcoming Clean the Bay Day. Welcome, Bill. How are you doing this afternoon, sir? I'm doing really good. Thank you for having me, Will. Absolutely. Thank you for uh, holding on the line with me. Uh, so anyway, so uh, tell us, Bill, um, I don't know if I've ever had you on Shore Talk with me. Tell me a little bit about the Kipped Peak State Park. Oh, I'd love to. Yeah, this is my first time on the air, so this is kind of fun. Uh, Kipped Peak State Park, as many of you might know, is located at the southern tip of the eastern shore. And we're a nearly 600-acre state park with uh, six, nearly six miles worth of trails, beaches, cabins, campgrounds, typical things you would find in the state park, a wonderful place to come to, although I know many of you out there may not have been there in years. Uh, I had a lady ask me how things were in the park the other day, and I said, pretty good. When was the last time you were there? And she told me the ferry was running when the last time she was there, and that was 1964. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway, boy. Come back and check out your park. It's, it's a lot going on down there. And in the park, um, as an interpreter, I'm a park ranger and interpreter. As an interpreter, I'm involved heavily in both interpretive programs within the park uh, campfires, hikes, paddles, fishing, nighttime owl prowls, uh, art in the park, uh, tons of uh, activities going on year-round in the park. And then outside the park, we are heavily involved uh, in our community, both with the schools, church groups, community groups, uh, in outreach, education, uh, conservation, and, and different areas. In fact, today I'm at uh, Kips Peak Elementary School where Ms. Parker invited me in to uh, be, take part in the fourth grade um, Virginia Studies program, and I'm portraying the 61st governor of Virginia, uh, Governor Holton. And so I'm sit it's literally sitting in the principal's office right now. And so things of that nature are what we do at the park, and one of the things that's really important to us is to, to, to use what I, I term as a, a, a real approach to education and conservation. And when I say real, that's an acronym we use for uh, recreation, education, advocacy, and land conservation. And so everything we do with the schools and our park and everywhere else, we try to make it fun. We try to have a recreational aspect to it. And that's easy to, to figure out when you're, you're looking at um, kayaking or fishing. But when you're talking about bird migration, how do you make that um, fun and exciting? You know, we do that through games and activities and hands-on learning. Uh, so everything that you do, whether you go out paddling for fun or otherwise, you're probably going to learn something with us. And then advocates, we're trying to build advocates with our young uh, students on the shore and get them to understand their public spaces, their public lands, their environment, their home, where we live, uh, to understand our Chesapeake Bay and the, and the ocean and the waters and our responsibility to take care of those for the future. And so we try to build those advocates and get them to stand up make their voices heard and their actions seen by doing things like Clean the Bay Day. And so this is a, a big part of what we're doing as far as building the future, we think. And so, then, um, go ahead. I was just going to say, you know, think, you know, put yourself in the shoes of the average person who hasn't been there. We won't go quite back as far as 1964, but who hasn't been there in a while, you know, what types of things does this person need to be interested in to just say, you know, hey, we're going to take a Saturday and we're going to drive down to Kip to Peak and we're going to check it out. You know, what what do they need to have in mind? What do they need to bring with them? What are their options? Is there a place yeah. when they show up where they can get more information about maps of the area and things to do? Outstanding. Well, thanks for all those lead-ins. Yes, there are. When you come to our park, you're going to come through the front gate at the contact station where you'll probably be greeted by one of our state park rangers if you're there on a weekend. And uh, we have different rates for coming into the park. Parking fees is as low as $4. And then there's obviously fees for cabins and, and campgrounds. And they vary uh, quite a bit. So I won't get into specific costs there. But once you come into the park, you can stop in at our office, which would be just on your right as you're heading down to the waterfront. And in there they have additional information about our park, our activities, our programs, trail guides. Uh, we have a published ca uh, calendar every month with our programs that you can attend. So you can pick one of those up as well and get some more in information about the park. That's also where you would check in if you're going to get a campsite or a cabin uh, as well. But as you consider continue on down Kitt Peak Drive, on the left-hand side, you're going to go by what's the old Torrens Motor Lodge, which is our picnic area. 
<laughs> uh, picnic shelters, picnic uh, grills, tables, uh, trails, nice little place to stop off with the family and do some picnicking. Restrooms are available there as well, and it's the trailhead for the uh, 5.1 miles of trails. Continuing on down the road, you're going to get down to the waterfront area. You're going to pass the camp store, which has pretty much anything you might have forgotten to bring with you. Uh, camp store is pretty well stocked with everything. If you need sunscreen, uh, bug spray, water, drinks, food, fishing pole, bait, you know it. It's in there. But as you go past that, you're at the waterfront, and you have a beach. And so typically we have two, be we have two beaches. We have a swim beach and a natural beach. Swim beaches are no uh, – you can't bring your dogs to the swim beach. Um, but you can take them on the natural beach as long as you keep them on a leash. And, on, and you know, typical things at the beach would be, you know, sunscreen, water, um, communication, so you can listen to music, uh, things of that nature. And then right next to that is the fishing pier, which is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, year-round. Um, there's a fee of $3 for adults and, and, and a dollar for children. You don't need a license in the state of Virginia to fish on our pier because we already licensed it for you. Uh, but you do need to have an FIP, that's a fish ID program number from the state, if uh, if you're going to fish or have a license because that's a requirement. Uh, so we have a lot of things going on. Those are things that you can do in the park. Those are things that uh, we work very hard to get you guys into the park and using. We have wagon rides for folks that don't want to do a lot of walking. We have six-passenger golf cart tours for, uh, for folk families with small kids or older folks who just don't want to get around in the hot sun. Goodness gracious, we got a lot going on down there. We did uh, we, we do interpretive programs throughout the week. And last year, you know, when I first came to the park about five years ago, we weren't doing a lot during the year on these programs, and we were hitting about fifteen hundred people a year. And last year, just in our interpretive programs alone, we had uh, fourteen thousand nine hundred and eighty people come through our programs, and most of those are students and, and adults within our community. So we're getting to see a lot of people out in our community these days. Wow, that's great. So tell me a little bit. I didn't realize you guys have cabins. Are those actually for rent, or are those just to kind of have lunch in, get out of the bugs or the nope. sun? Nope, nope. You can. Uh, we have five lodges, which are six bedroom, three bathroom, sixteen person lodges. Uh, they come fully furnished with everything you need except for your food. And if you forget some toiletries, there's some of those in there as well. So those are pretty pretty well used by large families, family reunions, groups of that nature. Um, for those of us who don't have 16 friends we want to spend a week or a weekend with, uh, we have these two bedroom cabins now. We just opened those last May. That is, they're really amazing little places. I mean, it's glamping uh, at its best. They're really well <laughs> furnished and they're in a nice shady place. It's a short walk or a ride down to the waterfront. You're right in the midst of the nature area, so the trails are all around you. And then across the street from that, where our campground is, uh, where we have, you know, well over 125 campsites, both for RVs and tents and everything in between with water, electric, and sewage, if you wish. Uh, we have that going on on the north end of our park, uh, and that goes pretty much from March until uh, the beginning of December year-round. Our cabins and lodges are open year-round because we don't have to winterize those. And you can rent those for as little as two, two nights, which is pretty amazing. And then... Something new or kind of new, we have a yurt, uh, which is an old Mongolian uh, sleeping tent with air conditioning and heating and refrigerator and a futon and bunk beds. It's right on the bluff looking out about 40 feet above the Chesapeake Bay, looking out over the bay, wraparound deck, picnic table, fire pit, uh, and a grill. And it's a pretty amazing place. And, and when Governor McCall was with us, he authorized the purchase of uh, yurts across the state for all state parks is we're in the process of building three more in Kiptipi. So stay tuned for that. They're going in this year. And uh, we're pretty excited about that. Wow. So how many, how much shoreline does the Kiptipi State Park en encompass or does it, does it have? Yeah, right about three miles total. Um, one of the interesting things about that shoreline, like I said, we have two beaches. We have a swim beach, which is on the North Beach. And that is, you know, you can play in the sand, you can swim in the water, you can have little floats and stuff like that. Um, no no, uh, no boats, no paddle boards, no dogs, no fishing and crabbing on that beach. We try to keep it clean and pristine. But over on the natural beach, which is about two miles, uh, you can walk your dog, you can fish and crab, you can bring boats up to the shore and, and ha have a picnic if you're coming in from the water. It's a much uh, much longer and, and, and uh, a little bit more liberal, so to speak, uh, beach as far as uh, doing things. Uh, with your family but one of the interesting things there is this we have 33 acres of new habitat that has developed in the last 70 years down there which is a coastal dune area complete with two freshwater habitats 
filled with marshmallows and rose mallows and cattails. And that shoreline uh, is one that developed as a result of them putting that pier in place when the ferry was running back from, six, from 48 to 64. When they moved the ferry from Cape Charles to Kiptipeak to make it a shorter route, they put the, the pier in, which is now our waterfront pier. They sunk the concrete ships out there to, to create a safe harbor as a breakwater and operated until 64 until the bridge opened up. And no one was noticing that during that time frame, the sand was building up on both sides of that pier. And then ultimately in the last 70 years, a complete new habitat of 33 acres with uh, trees and bushes and water and frogs and fox and coyote has developed. And so it's an amazing little 33 acre uh, watershed that we use for educational purposes, recreational purposes, and we like to keep it clean. So maybe um, something that might be a little confusing. Can you tell us, you know, maybe not explain the difference, but you are actually located, you know, on the bay side of the eastern shore, and you're not uh, located. So I might have led you in wrong on that because I said y'all were located in Townsend. That is on the seaside of the eastern shore at the very tip end, and you guys are actually located on the bay side of Route 13, correct? No, that is correct. I, I wasn't going to correct you on that one, but yes, we are actually um, closer to Cheapside than we are Townsend. Okay. Uh, we're in Kippetique. We're on the bay side, and we're just about two and a half miles from the bridge, north of the bridge. So, I got uh, the you. next big neighbor going south would be Sunset Beach. I got gotcha. you. Okay. And, and of course, the refuge across the street from us and down there, we work closely with as well. So, the National Wildlife Refuge. Well, it's not the first, and it won't be the last mistake that I make today. But uh, tell no, us, me, me with all that shoreline, how often, you know, how much trash do you guys find along that shoreline as you're out and about doing your various activities? It's interesting that uh, we talk about that, that the uh, high tide brings us a fresh batch every day, <laughs> and uh, sometimes twice a day. And so we get, um, you know, we keep it very clean. We have a lot of volunteer groups that come in and, and help us clean our beaches. We're really big about keeping it clean. And uh, so we, you know, we seldom get more than three or four bags of garbage off of, in a really big cleanup of our area but occasionally it can push in you know tons of dead fish or debris i've even had a i've had a refrigerator wash up from baltimore maryland uh, so you know we get some pretty unique things you know washing up on our beaches i even got a note in a bottle last year which i thought was cute but it's still litter um so uh because we don't have a lot of cleaning in our own park we still do a, a clean the bay day clean up there every year and and we and we love it we do it we're going to be doing it this year from 8 30 to noon on uh, june the 2nd uh, but we also felt the need to go out into our community and give back to this community that has you know come out in 14,980 people to our programs and so we decided to find a place outside of our park that we could clean up this year as part of the clean the bay day on june 2nd and we found a wonderful location in cape charles at the harbor and so we'll have two cleanups going on that day, one at Kiptipeak at, at uh, 8.30 to, to noon at our waterfront area that you can sign up for and, and check in. And that's a kind of a low-impact, easy walk cleanup. And then we're going to have a more complex cleanup in the Cape Charles Harbor right there at the Yacht Center uh, where we found a, a beautiful place that's got a lot of debris in it from high tides, from mailboxes to uh, parts of docks and things of that nature. So we're going to clean that place up from nine o'clock till noon on that Saturday. And we have a number of groups coming in from around the community to help us out. The uh, shorekeeper, JC Ford's got some folks coming in. Uh, Josephine Moody uh, has got some folks coming in to join us and she's working with us on this as far as uh, supporting the Eastern Shore Resource Conservation and Development Council. And then uh, Karen Jacklich from the uh, Chesapeake Bay Foundation came by and walked the site with me and we took that on as a, a large Eastern Shore project for Clean the Bay Day. So. We would like to encourage folks to come out to either one of those and help us that day and, uh, and and help us clean the bay and take care of it because we really, you know, I love the bay because my connection goes back to 1961 when I was born in the Chesapeake Bay watershed. And I grew up on this on this bay and literally have the water flowing through my veins because of a <laughs> near drowning incident. So we really take care of it. We, we appreciate y'all coming out and helping us with it. We hope you'll help help us on that Saturday. Uh, you. We encourage you to go to the Chesapeake Bay Foundation and sign up in advance, but, hey, just show up. And if you can't make it that day, one other thing we like to advocate for is, you know, you can just stop and pick up a piece of trash wherever you are that day. Anything within the 64,000 square miles of the Chesapeake Bay watershed that you do to help as far as picking up things, cleaning up a spill, that's going to help. So if you can't make it to a beach that day, just take a moment to pick up a piece of trash and put it where it belongs. And you are contributing to the success 
you know, when I was a kid growing up on the bay, there were, there were seasons we couldn't eat the fish back in the 60s and 70s. I went to camp up in James River one year. We weren't allowed to swim for the entire summer because the uh, James River had been polluted with keepone. So I've seen the bay at its worst, and I've seen it where it is now, about a third of the way back to where it needs to be. And I'm very encouraged. After leaving for about 30 years, I came back. We have pelicans now, which is amazing. We have abundance of dolphin and whales showing up and manatees showing up in Florida. So it really has um, come back strong thanks to the efforts of those in the early 70s and beyond. And we can, if we keep up with it, it'll come back to where we need it to be, I think. It certainly is great to get the uh, good news that we've been getting about the increases in grass and crab numbers and things like that. So, uh, And certainly, uh, yeah, no small part due to the efforts of uh, volunteers who take some time out. And even, like you said, if they can't show up on Clean the Bay Day, which is coming up in June, just pick up that, you know, one little piece when you walk the beach or what have you. You know, every little bit helps. So, Absolutely. Absolutely. So, Bill, um, could you give us um, a little bit of information one more time about maybe um, how folks can find out more and keep up with what's going on at the Kip to Peak State Park? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, um, you can visit our, our website. At, um, just type in Kip to Peak State Park, and it'll come up as, uh, on, on, on the uh, Google search. You click on that, and we have a list of all activities uh, that we can do there as, as far as the interpretive programs and special events in the park. And I have everything through the summer until Labor Day in the database right now for you to look at. And that lists all of our programs, the start times, uh, where, to, where we start, a little bit about it, what to bring with you for that type of program, and if there's a cost. And most of our pro programs are free of cost. Uh, I only charge for fishing because I have to pay for bait and kayaking because we have to rent kayaks in order to do that. So uh, that'll be online. You can find it there. You'll see around town in Cape Charles and other places we have a, a nice calendar we print out and, and post all around town and, and have places like Brown Dog Ice Cream and here at the elementary school. So uh, lots of ways to find out what we're doing there and really would like to have you all come in and join us. All right. And don't forget, Clean the Bay Day is coming up Saturday, June the 2nd. And if you want more information about that, you can check it all out at our website, SureDailyNews.com. Bill, want to thank you very much for joining us today, sir, and wish you certainly the best of luck on Clean the Bay Day. Hey, thank you for your time, and uh, come on out and join us. It's going to be a lot of fun. Thank you. Absolutely. That's going to be a Wednesday Shore Talk. Thank you for listening to Shore Talk. This interview has been recorded and is available on WESR's YouTube page. To schedule a short talk for your community event or organization, call us at 757-787-3200 or email nancy at wesr.net.